Hey everybody, this is uh, Dave Welch here in beautiful Yorktown, Virginia. And uh, you can see behind me, I've got my uh, Japanese maple. It's starting to bud. And then I, I've got a cypress over here. This little tree, it's kind of hurting, so I'm gonna have to take care of it here shortly. But today I wanna talk about um, the events of this past week. They, of course, the markets have been volatile. It seems like I'm saying that every week. Um, the ARC funds have been going up and down, and mainly down. Uh, recently, uh, but they've been starting to level off and we've seen a lot of activity on the ARC website. But right now I want to talk about uh, Kathy Wood's email, but she's only talking about three stocks in all of her funds. So I find that a little bit curious, but that's right here. Okay, so we got the latest uh, email from Kathy Wood on ARC Invest. And uh, so she says, we share weekly commentaries with investors on stocks and our strategies that have a appreciated or dropped more than 15% any day during the course of the week. We hope you find this useful. Okay, so starting off with uh, uh, Silvergate, ticker SI, traded up 16% on Monday, rebounding after a drop of nearly 50% over the past few weeks. In our view, given its strong network effects, Silvergate Exchange Network positions Silvergate as both a facilitator and a prime beneficiary of increased uh, crypto adoption. And you guys already know my opinion on crypto. I think there's going to be a shakedown on crypto and uh, whatever rises to the top is what we'll probably all be going with. So um, uh, the next one is X1, X-O-N-E, uh, ticker. A stock closed down almost 16% on Tuesday after Oppenheimer downgraded it from outperform to perform on concerns about both valuation and competition. X1 is a leader in binder jetting 3D printing. Okay, this was in the uh, uh, her email last week. So Vuzix, ticker V-U-Z-I, a company developing wearable display technology traded up 15% on Wednesday and 20% on Friday after a U.S.-based Fortune 100 insurance company placed a $400,000 order for its M400 smart glasses. Okay, now I'd like to talk about uh, a, a paper that was posted by one of uh, Kathy Wood's employees on the ARK Invest website, and that's right here. Okay, so we've got this uh, new... Um, article by Tasha Keeney, a CFA analyst at ARK Invest. Uh, this is at their web, on their web page about Tesla. Uh, this is a very interesting article. You can go to arkinvest.com and just search at Tesla in this little search window and you'll see her article pop right up. So one of the things that popped out of me in this article is their price targets for their stock in 2025. So look at this. Their bear case is $1,500. What is Tesla trading at now? Around $600, roughly, plus or minus. Um, plus or minus 100 bucks. And uh, so they're targeting in just four years at being at uh, triple its value right now. That's the bear case. The bull case, $4,000 per share. And this would be split adjusted. So these are already split adjusted targets. And... Um, so they say, we believe that there is a 25% probability that Tesla could be worth $1,500 per share or less in 2025. So um, then they also, their bull case is also 25%. So that means they have a 50% uh, probability that it's going to be worth $3,000 in 2025. So that's six times its current value. Uh, based on market uh, trading activity in the last week or two. So they have a lot of estimates here. So you've got this column, the bear case example, and then the bull case example, all by 2025. So, and then they got their 2020 um, numbers right here. So 0 0.5, these are millions. So that's 500,000 cars sold. Uh, ever, average selling price is $50,000. And you'll notice the bear case, it goes down to $45,000 per car. The bull case, it's even cheaper per car, but they're using rights law. So that's where, where uh, productivity increases, unit cost per, cost per unit decreases uh, inverse or directly. So, or inversely that is. <laughs> 
So insurance revenue, um, I think, yeah, Tesla does offer insurance on their cars, but not in every state. And I want to say that uh, there's a couple of states that where insurance regulators are just finalizing, and I think those are Illinois and Texas and maybe a few others. But note that uh, Tesla is building a gigafactory in Austin, Texas, and they have um, Tesla's sister company, SpaceX, has a lot of facilities in Texas, including, uh, I think, McGregor, Texas, Boca Chica, Texas, Houston, Texas, and, uh, of course, Austin, where I think uh, Elon Musk now lives. Of course, Elon claims that he doesn't own any property. Well, his companies probably own property, and he just probably rents from his companies. I don't know. That's just my guess, my estimate. So if I were him, that's what I would be doing. So autonomous ride hail revenue. So zero, zero, and then 327 billion. So that's the bull case. Hmm, interesting. So if they really think that autonomous ride hail is going to be the future, then that is a very bullish case. Uh, electric vehicle gross margin. Hmm, that, these are interesting numbers. So bear case, 40% gross margin, and then down to 25% gross margin uh, for electric vehicle. The total gross fart margin is 50% uh, for the bull case and 43% for the bear case. So interesting. So I wonder if they're accounting for um, the uh, income from their other uh, divisions within Tesla, such as, you know, the Powerwall, um, all the uh, business of business where they're selling batteries to electric utilities, so on and so forth. And here's market cap in billions. So bear case, 1.5 trillion in 2025, or 4 trillion is the bull case. Share, share price, $1,500 a share, $4,000 a share. So bear and bull. And then these yields, I don't think so. I mean, if they're only at 0.4% and they, Tesla is a growth company, most growth companies don't offer big dividends. It's those deep value companies that offer big dividends. And Tesla is definitely not a deep value company. When I say deep value, that's a company that doesn't really grow in share. Tesla is definitely a bull, you know, growth company, in my opinion. Okay, here she even comes out and says it. Using Wright's Law, electric vehicle gross margins never exceeded. Bear example is 40%. Bull example is 25%. Uh, capital efficiency, gross capex per car. Okay, 8,000 bear, 6,000 uh, bull. Maximum annual production increase, 90% um, increase bull, 65% increase bear. So they're increasing, they're expecting an increase starting in 2025, 65% per year. Very, very interesting. So let's see what else. So we keep our uh, we key updates. Okay, refine efficiency, electric vehicles. Um, hmm, 3.6 billion on CapEx, put in capital efficiency, 10,000 assuming a 16% increase. See, they're talking about these increases. Interesting. At battery day, Tesla announced that updated chemistry in a month would reduce investment costs by 75% over time to give Tesla credit for what we believe is its superior capital efficiency with lower capital expenditure per car in our last model. Given these estimates, along with the additional growth added to our model, the forecast unit sales between 5 and 10 million vehicles in 2025. Insurance. Okay, this is interesting. I want to read this. ARC estimates that Tesla could achieve better than average margins on insurance thanks to the highly detailed driving data it collects from customer vehicles. Partnering with underwriters, Tesla introduced its insurance product in August 2019. Currently, it is available only in California. ARC believes that it is that in the next few years, Tesla could roll out its insurance offering to, uh, to more states. Okay, so I stand corrected. Uh, underwriting its own insurance policy. Because its vehicles have better than average safety profiles, Tesla could be, should be able to use real-time data to offer insurance in its vehicles, pricing it dynamically 
lowering customer uh, acquisition cost and increasing margins. Relative to progressives, uh, I think they're talking about progressive insurance, you know, with flow, <laughs> you know, those commercials you see on TV all the time. So she says, uh, relative to progressives, 13% EBIT margin in 2019, ARC estimates that Tesla could achieve margin clo margins close to 40%. If we were to sell 40% of vehicles with its own insurance offering by 2025, Tesla insurance revenue could approach 23 billion annually in our bear case. In our bull case, ARC estimates that as robotaxis ramp, Tesla's insurance revenues will be incorporated into a platform fee. Insurance boosts our price target by roughly $60 in 2025. Okay, so that's not much of a, that's not much of a um, uh, effect. You know, it's a very small margin uh, of the overall revenue. So human driving ride hail. So yeah, that's probably more likely to happen. Full autonomous, that's very low. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think that's going to happen by 2025. Maybe, but mm, there needs to be a lot of uh, stuff to be, hashed out in their algorithms. Okay, so here we go. Bear case, 1,500. Uh, very low likelihood. So they say it's a 50% likelihood that the expected value is um, going to be $3,000 a share by 2025. The As you go further out to the right, it's 0%. Um, so the bull case of $4,000 is uh, t also 25%. So bear 25 bull this is the bell curve. But uh, yeah, and this is this row is just the price per share. And you notice it goes up exponentially over here, uh, closer to the 0% chance. Scenario mix within price target ranges shown above. So we got, this is kind of hard to read guys. So I'll zoom in for you. Tesla's production doesn't exceed 4 million and does not meaningly sell into vertically integrated ride hail nor deliver it on robo taxi. So that's the gray. So uh, very low likelihood of that. Tesla produces more than 4 million vehicles but does not meaningly sell into the vertically integrated ride hail to deliver on robo taxi. That's in the green area. So it could be as high. Uh, so in the, in the uh, um, middle here, so we got the 0% on the left, 0% on the right, 50% likelihood in the middle. So we are at probably 20% in the 50%. <laughs> so then the black area is Tesla incorporates vertically integrated ride hail, but doesn't deliver on robo taxi. So that's more likely to happen. And then Tesla uh, delivers uh, robo taxi and that's in this purple and they think that's the most likely to happen. So interesting. Uh, in many of the low end cases we modeled production constraints limit Tesla to fewer than 4 million units produced per year while technological and logistical bottlenecks prevent the launch of, bo of both human-driven and autonomous ride hail networks as shown in gray. When production is not constrained, a human-driven ride hail network increases the expected price target range as shown in green. Less than 20% of Tesla vehicles sold into ride hail in 2025. And in Navy, 20 20 to 70 percent of tesla vehicles sold into ride hail in 2025. finally in purple the ride uh, the high-end price targets incorporate the assumption that tesla launches a robo taxi service and in arcs tesla price target please note that the electric vehicle and robo taxi business lines generate roughly 40 percent and 50 percent of tesla's expected market cap the average values from our Monte Carlo simulation, respectively, in 2025, as shown below. So uh, let's see, what do we got? Revenue by business line in our expected case value. So electric vehicle, if they incorporate. Uh, so yeah, OK, so green is electric vehicle. Purple is robo taxi. Black is human driven ride hail and Gray is insurance. So yeah, like I said, gray takes a very small sliver of their overall market cap. So here it is. Revenue in by business line in our expected case, value case, $507 billion in revenue. So for 2025, majority of it is elected electric vehicle. EBITDA by business line in our expected value case, 
176 billion EBITDA. So that's uh, half of it is electric vehicle. More of it would be robo taxi. And then market cap by market cap by business line in our expected va expected value case, three trillion dollar market cap. So majority of the revenue would be then robo taxi. So conclusion, uh, given the updates outlined in this blog, ARCs 2025 uh, target for Tesla is three thousand dollars per share. Um, that's implied. ARC's bear and bull case suggests that Tesla could be worth roughly $1,500 and $4,000 per share, respectively. We published our model in on GitHub and invite you to test your own assumptions, GitHub. Okay, so I'll take a look at that later. And our craft visualiza visualizations from the simulation outputs from our assumptions. Note, we do not model Tesla's utility, utility energy storage or solar business in our models. Okay, so that's a big factor. Tesla's uh, energy storage and solar business, I would say, is a good chunk. So expect these to be, this $3,000 per share, to be skewed upwards when they account for the energy storage and st solar business. I think that's a big chunk of Tesla's uh, uh, income. We also have not modeled Bitcoin assumptions in our model. Okay. So for ARC's work on Bitcoin as corporate cash, please download our latest big ideas presentation. Okay, well, that's it for that. So this is a big note. They should put that at the top of their article because, you know, that's that's a big chunk of their business. So, but there you go. Okay, I hope everybody's enjoying their weekend. It's gorgeous here in Yorktown. I'll, and this, this jacket's probably a little too warm for me sitting here in the sun. So, um, but anyway, uh, the, uh, I'm going to continue to invest in ARC funds, and right now, during these dips, is when I'm picking up shares. So as I get cash available, or if I find another fund, or I have cash in another fund that I want to move money from, like it's doing really well, like it's on a high, I'll sell some of those shares and buy more of ARC. So, um, but anyway, so this video is just for entertainment and educational purposes only. And um, if you need financial advice, please contact your own stockbroker or uh, financial advisor. All right, you guys have a wonderful weekend, wonderful rest of your Sunday. And if you have tomorrow off, by all means, enjoy the sun if you have it. All right, take care. Bye.